Hello and welcome back for another episode with your favorite project lead the way teacher, Mr. Spaeth. Today we're going to be talking about stormwater runoff and um, when we are developing, what it is that we have to make sure our improvements on the land do to make sure that uh, no more storm or runoff goes into our uh, runoff systems than normal. So as always, let me share my screen with you and we should find our PowerPoint for Project Leadway CEA class 2.3.11, a stormwater runoff. Okay, uh, what we are going to be using is called the rational method. So we're going to be looking at rainfall, at peak rates, and intensity of that rainfall over what area we're looking at, area this time in acres, and then some sort of right, uh, runoff coefficient, which is dependent on our surface type. So notice if we change our surface type, we're gonna change how much runoff we have from our property, right? So if we go from grass to pavement, obviously the pavement, depending on what type it is, is not going to retain the same amount of water that grass would. So most uh, or many regulations dictate that the post-development runoff not exceed the pre-development runoff. So we need to do two things. We need to figure out, well, what does our land have for runoff right now? What is our pre-development runoff? What is our post-development runoff? And are, are we improving the land? Are we not improving the land? If we're not improving it, what can we do, okay? So this rational method we're gonna look at uh, can also be broken down to uh, the rational method with a recurrence adjustment, uh, very, very simple um, runoff coefficient adjustment factor that we'll talk about later. Okay, this runoff coefficient adjustment factor, uh, we're gonna look at different return periods. So a, a 100 year return period, uh, a 25 or a one, one five and 10 year return period. Uh, this just means in the likelihood that we have two really, really big storms right in a row, how likely is this and, and should we beef up um, our our development plans in order to plan for those those recurrences we're going to be uh we're going to be solving for a 100 year in our question today so we're going to use a coefficient of 1.25 the next we're going to look at is uh characteristics and this is basically just an equation intensity is equal to depth divided by duration <coughs> so how many rain how much rainfall are we getting over a certain period of time? And that's different for every different city, every different state, every different country. And so I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I did a quick search, um, found was a table that gave me 100 year, one hour rainfall in inches for Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it tells me that is 2.71 inches. So that's my design. That's what I'm going to design for. That's my I, my intensity. So I am collecting all these values. Notice I have a before column and a couple after columns because I'm going from concrete to some concrete, some asphalt. I have a building on there, so I have a roof. As well, as I have a lot of grass. Okay, So I'm starting off with a 100-year storm, so 1.25 recurrence factor. Um, and then I am using 2.71 for my intensity factor. I have 1.83 acres, and you can see that my site right here, it was just put in there for us already. Normally we would get this from a survey, but 1.83 acres. And then the last thing that I need to look at is this coefficient. This coefficient is dictated by uh, the, the surface type on our site. And so if I look at concrete, my, my site is, is kind of weird. It's a mixture of concrete and grass, all, all grown over. What I did is I took an average between the two. And where this can be found, if you are in a Project Lead the Way CEA class, you can go to Files, General Student Resources, CEA Student Resources. And what we are looking at is rational method runoff coefficients. Also can be found on a simple internet search. And if I'm looking here, it, category. Um, it also breaks them down by use. So general farmland, general pasture, park, that sort of thing. What I have is I have concrete, a mixture of concrete and a mixture of very poor drainage grass. And so what I did is I took this 0.17 and 
the, the concrete, I took an average between 0.8 and 0.95, which is 0.875. And I took an average of those two because I just have a mixture of those two. I, I would say it's half and half. And so I'm just finding a coefficient that, that deals with this concrete slash poor drainage, poor drainage grass. Okay, so I just did it all in one instead of doing two different ones and breaking it down, breaking this acre down to half and half. I just I made the coefficient half and half. Okay. Two is much, much more grass. So I have 1.445 acres of grass. And then I have a roof. I have asphalt for my parking lot, uh, or parts of my parking lot, and then concrete for parts of my site as well. I can get the amount of area that these take up by going to my site plan, uh, selecting those, finding the area for them, and then using this equation. I'm in square feet when I, when I use Revit to do this. Okay. So if I, if I highlight, say, this right here, it should give me a surface area, 15,312 of this, just this shape. Any shape that you put on there, it will give you an area for. So again, you can take that square footage, square feet, and you can divide it by 43,560 in order to get how many... So that should be a relatively easy thing to go about doing, but it's going to be different for everybody. Okay. Now, the only thing that's different, notice my CF is the same. My intensity is the same. The only thing that's going to be different other than our acres is going to be our coefficient. And again, that all can be found on this worksheet. Okay. I take the middle value for these. So if I have concrete, I'm taking 0.95 plus 0.8 dividing by 2. To get 0.875. You'll see that on my worksheet for concrete, 0.875. I did the same thing with asphalt. Uh, the roof, they say to do 0.95 for a coefficient, but I don't, I don't see how that's true. If, if rain is going on your roof, it's going right off of it. There's, there's going to be none of it. There's, all of it is going to run off. So 100% of it, I just said, okay, uh, roof should just be 100%. Grass. Again, I did a an average. So I took the average between the 0.13 and the 0.17 and I got 0.15 and that's what I used for my coefficient for grass. So again, use that table. Uh, again, to calculate Q, you're just multiplying those four values. Add before, here's my before right there. My after, I'm just adding up all of these values. And you can see that I'm actually improving the land here. I'm taking what was very poor drainage grass and concrete and making a lot of it grass. So I'm going to be improving my drainage, which is a good thing, which means I don't have to put in any sort of retention pond or anything like that. But let's say for argument's sake that I was not improving it. So what can I do? I can put in, in my site, a retention pond. I can put in, let's say, uh, a little pond right over here that holds water. Well, how much water? Okay, I would want to, I would want to hold in runoff is this per second. So note it's cubic feet per second. I can get a cubic feet per hour increase just by multiplying by 3,600. If I have that, now I just have a cubic feet. Let's say I needed to somehow gather and hold on to 4,886 feet of or cubic feet of water. That's a, that's a 48 by 100 foot pond that holds that water that would fall in the most uh, enormous of storms, back-to-back uh, -back storms uh, that I would ever get. And that's how I, would, how I would size my retention pond. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And uh, as always, uh, please reach out if you would, uh, anything else from the CEA or Project Lead the Way curriculum. Thanks again.